now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Aron Matet. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aaron Mate. I'm a journalist with The Gray Zone based in the US. It's an honor to speak to you today about what I think is one of the most important and overlooked global stories in recent memory. The OPCW, the world's top chemical weapons watchdog, is facing a serious scandal. Leaks from inside strongly suggest that the OPCW has been severely compromised, and the implications of this are grave. It would mean that in the case of Duma, the OPCW was exploited to accuse the Syrian government of a chemical weapons attack in Duma in April 2018. It would also mean that the OPCW was used to retroactively justify the bombing of Syria by several member states just days after the alleged Duma incident. In short, it appears the OPCW was compromised to justify military strikes. There are also indications that the OPCW has retaliated against two veteran officials, one of them is here today, who were a part of the Duma investigation and challenged the censorship of the Duma evidence. These two OPCW officials are highly regarded scientists with more than 25 years of combined experience at the organization. Yet, instead of being protected and given the chance to air their concerns, these two scientists have seen their reputations impugned by the OPCW leadership. There is substantial evidence to back all of this up. And today I will try to summarize the key details. The OPCW's fact-finding mission, or FFM, deployed to Syria in what is known as Country X to investigate the Duma incident in April 2018. They interviewed scores of witnesses and visited several key sites. They examined gas cylinders found at the scene, took chemical samples, hundreds of photos, and conducted detailed measurements. Upon their return from Syria, the FFM team drafted an extensive and detailed report of their findings. But what the investigators found in Duma is not what the OPCW released to the world. And that is because the investigators who were on the ground in Syria were overruled and had their findings censored. The key facts about the censorship, to my knowledge, are undisputed. First, the investigators' initial report, which was due for imminent publication, was secretively re-edited to produce a version that sharply deviated from the original. Both versions, the original and the altered report, have been published by WikiLeaks. Comparing both reports, we see the key facts were removed or misrepresented. Conclusions were also rewritten to support the allegation that a chlorine gas attack had occurred in Duma. Yet the team's initial, yet, excuse me, the team's initial original report did not conclude that a chemical attack occurred. In fact, their report had presented the possibility that victims in Duma were killed in an incident that was, quote, non-chemical related, unquote. Though unstated, the reader could easily infer from this that the, that the militants who controlled Duma at the time had staged the scene to make it falsely appear that a chemical attack had occurred. Then there is the toxicology assessment. Four experts from an OPCW and NATO member state conducted a toxicology review. They concluded that the observed symptoms of the victims in Duma quote, were inconsistent with exposure to chlorine and no other obvious candidate chemical causing the symptoms could be identified, unquote. Yet these statements were kept secret and are inconsistent with the conclusions of the final report. There were also chemical tests of the samples collected in Duma. These samples showed that chlorinated compounds were detected at what amounted to trace quantities in the parts per billion range. Yet this finding was not publicly disclosed. Furthermore, it later emerged that the chemicals themselves did not stand out as unique. Most, if not all, could have resulted from contact with household products such as bleach or come from chlorinated water or wood preservatives. Crucially, the control samples collected by the inspectors to give context to the analysis results were never analyzed. Because of other leaks, 
we now know that this censorship was challenged from the inside. The chief author of the initial report, identified by the OPCW as Inspector B, was among those who deployed to Syria for the entire Duma mission. Records show he was also, at the time, the OPCW's top expert in chemical weapons chemistry. On June 22nd, 2018, Inspector B protested the secretive redaction of his report in an email expressing his, quote, gravest concern. I will quote him now. He wrote, after reading this modified report, which incidentally no other team member who deployed into Duma has had the opportunity to do, I was struck by how much it misrepresents the facts, unquote. After that email of protest, and just days before a substitute stopgap interim report was published on July 6th, something very unusual occurred. A U.S. government delegation arrived at the OPCW and met with members of the team in Duma that had gone to Duma to try to influence them. The U.S. officials encouraged the Duma team to conclude that the Syrian government had committed a chemical attack with chlorine. It is worth noting here that the U.S. delegation promoted this chlorine theory, despite the fact that it was still not known at that time that no nerve agents had been found in Duma. The Duma investigators reportedly saw the meeting as unacceptable pressure and a violation of the OPCW's declared principles of independence and impartiality. Under the Chemical Weapons Convention, state parties are explicitly prohibited from seeking to influence the inspectors in the discharge of their responsibilities. Inspector B's intervention thwarted the imminent release of the doctored report. But at that point, the OPCW officials began to manage the issuance of a new negotiated report, namely the so-called interim report that was released on July 6, 2018. Although this interim report no longer contained some of the unsupported claims that senior OPCW officials had tried to insert, the interim report still omitted key facts found in the original uncensored report. Around that time, the investigation saw a drastic change. The protesting Inspector B, who had written the original report, was sidelined from the investigation. OPCW executives then decreed that the probe, from that point forward, would be handled by a so-called core team. This new core team made formal the exclusion of all the inspectors who had conducted the investigation in Syria, except for one paramedic. It was this so-called core team, and not the inspectors who had signed off on the original report, that generated the OPCW's final report of March 2019. This final report sharply differed from what the inspectors reported in the suppressed initial report. The final report concluded that there were reasonable grounds to believe that a chemical weapons attack occurred in Duma and that, quote, the toxic chemical was likely molecular chlorine, unquote. Many crucial facts and evidence redacted from the original report continued to be excluded. The final report also saw a major discrepancy when it comes to witness testimony. The witnesses interviewed offered sharply contrasting narr narratives, yet only those witnesses whose testimony supported the use of chemical weapons were used to inform the report's conclusions. It is also worth noting the imbalance in witness locations. Although the alleged chemical incident took place in Syria, twice as many witnesses were interviewed in country X. One inference drawn from the OPCW's final report was that gas cylinders found in Duma likely came from military aircraft. But in a leaked engineering assessment assigned to a sub-team of, of the FFM, the author of this leaked report found otherwise. The OPCW leadership has yet to offer a substantive explanation for why so much critical evidence was excluded and why the original report was radically altered. The OPCW Director General, Fernando Arias, justified the conclusions of the final report and excused alleged fraudulent scientific behavior by incorrectly stating that the FFM undertook the bulk of its analytical work during the last seven months of the investigation or after the interim report of July 2018. But a close review of the final report demonstrates that this claim is far from the case. As the dissenting inspectors have noted, by the time the interim report was released, 
31 of the 44 samples were analyzed. 34 of the 39 interviews had been conducted and analyzed. And the toxicological, and the toxicological study was already done, but its conclusions excluded. In the nearly eight months after the interim report was released, only 13 new samples were analyzed along with five additional interviews. Comparing the text of the final report to the original report is also instructive. The final report copy and pastes much of the text of the original report, but the one difference is that inconvenient evidence was removed and unsupported conclusions were added. And even if it were true, that the bulk of the analysis was done after the interim report. The fact that the OPCW would have conducted the bulk of its work after July 2018 would not in any way explain or justify the alleged scientific fraud committed before it. In fact, it would only raise the possibility that more fraud occurred. Instead of uh, addressing the discrepancies and cherry picked facts, the OPCW Director General, Fernando Arias, has denigrated the two members of the Duma fact-finding mission who challenged the manipulation of facts and evidence. The Director General has falsely portrayed these two as rogue actors with only minor roles in the investigation and incomplete information. Yet these two inspectors are unlikely candidates to suddenly go rogue. Inspector A, Ian Henderson, who is here today, it, uh, is here today, while the second inspector is known only as Inspector B. He has not been publicly identified. They served with the OPCW for 12 and 16 years, respectively. Internal OPCW appraisals of their job performance offer effusive praise. In 2005, a senior OPCW official wrote that Henderson has consistently received, quote, the highest rating possible. I consider him one of the best of our inspection team leaders, unquote. In 2018, an OPCW superior wrote that Inspector B, quote, has contributed the most to the knowledge and understanding of chemical weapons chemistry applied to inspections, unquote. Another manager described B as, quote, one of the most well-regarded team leaders whose experience of the organization, its verification regime, and judgment are unmatched. It is important to stress here that the internal concerns go beyond the Duma team members. Earlier this year, I heard from an OPCW official who voiced outrage at the treatment of Ian Henderson and Inspector B. I quote this person now, it is quite unbelievable that valid scientific concerns are being brazenly ignored in favor of a predetermined narrative. The lack of transparency in an investigative process with such enormous ram ramifications is frightful. The allegations of the two gentlemen urgently need to be thoroughly investigated and the functionality of the organization restored." Unquote. Now, fortunately, the two inspectors involved in this Duma controversy have offered a path to transparency into resolving this scandal. Earlier this year, they each wrote letters to the OPCW Director General asking for their concerns to be heard. The inspectors have received support from several prominent figures, including the OPCW's first Director General, Jose Bustani. In October 2019, Bustani took part in a panel that heard a detailed presentation from one of the Duma investigators. Mr. Bustani wrote, quote, the convincing evidence of irregular behavior in the OPCW investigation of the alleged Duma chemical attack confirms doubts and suspicions I already had. I have always expected the OPCW to be a true paradigm of multilateralism. My hope is that the concerns expressed publicly by the panel in its joint consensus statement will catalyze a process by which the organization can be resurrected to become the independent and non-discriminatory body it used to be. I hope that Mr. Bustani's words will be heeded. As a first step, the OPCW can simply do what it has not done so far, meet with the entire Duma team and let them present the evidence that was censored. It is very concerning that despite these serious allegations here, the OPCW Director General has never met with members of the Duma team, not just the two dissenting inspectors that are publicly known, but the entire team. If the OPCW is confident in its conclusions, and it should have no issue with at least hearing a dissenting point of view from its own inspectors. The importance of addressing this issue extends far beyond repairing the OPCW's reputation. Syria is a country that is now trying to rebuild 
from a devastating nearly decade long proxy war that caused massive suffering, destruction and death. But Assyria is trying to rebuild. It now faces a new kind of warfare in the form of crippling economic sanctions. In justifying the sanctions, the US government has cited, among other things, allegations of chemical weapons used by the Syrian government. The US government also says the Syrian government is the target of these sanctions, but it is the Syrian people who are feeling the pain. The UN Rapporteur on Sanctions says that, quote, unilateral sanctions applied to Syria have visited untold sufferings on ordinary people. The World Food, the World Food Program warns that Syrians living under economic blockade now face, quote, mass starvation or another mass exodus. The use of the OPCW to justify warfare on Syria, whether in the form of military strikes in 2018 or economic strangulation today in 2020, is additionally tragic in light of the OPCW's own history. It was just seven years ago that the OPCW was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for its work eliminating chemical weapons, including in Syria. That was a towering achievement and a hopeful moment for those who seek a world at peace. How unfortunate then. Oh, man. The top chemical weapons watchdog now potentially being compromised to lodge unproven allegations against Syria and justify warfare against it. The inspectors who have been silenced and maligned are trying to defend their organization's noble legacy from political exploitation. It is my hope that they will be heard. Thank you.